uh, I'm, I'm still trying to connect uh, the Zoom meeting with the YouTube live stream. Uh, I'll try to play the video now. Okay, thank you. Hello, Dr. Indraji. Thank you for attending this lecture. Now, Sensei, Dr. Indra is also here. Good morning, Kabuta Sensei. Hi, good morning, Indra Sensei. Hi. Thank you very much for your joining to this seminar. Yeah, nice to meet you again in Zoom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice to meet you again. Yeah, I'm using my my background is uh, TMU. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh good. <laughs> so, did you take take a photo of uh? Uh, that photo when you was a PhD student, right? That's right, Sensei. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. In Sakura. <laughs> Sakura, yeah. Very yes. beautiful. But Ani, okay. okay. We couldn't hear your video. <laughs> uh, Halo, Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi. Halo. Making something by using a microcontroller, but broadcasting system, and many more. We have to do something correctly, so we can have a good quality result. That's why we learn by doing. Making something by using a microcontroller, but broadcasting system, and many more. We have to do something correctly, so we can have a good quality result. That's why we learn by doing. I was very happy. 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 I was very happ
Thank you, Dr. Fazli, the Dean of Electrical Engineering from MMU Malaysia. Thank you for joining today. Thank you, Rutnia. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ini bermain apa? Ada. We will start within two minutes later. Mbak Ani, could you please? Yes, please. Start now. Yes. please. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the International Case Lecture Series Graduate Competency Enhancement, the International Case Lecture Series Electrical Engineering Department of Polytechnic Negeri Semarang. My name is Ani. It's a wonderful and precious chance for me to be your master of ceremony in this event on Friday, 13 of November, 2020. First of all, let's send thanks to God Almighty who have been giving us guidance, happiness, help, and mercy so we can attend and participate in this event. I would like to welcome Mr. Budi Prasetya as the Vice Director of Planning and Cooperation of Polytechnic Negeri Semarang, Professor Dr. Naoyuki Kubota from Graduate School of System Design, Tokyo Metropolitan University as today's speaker, 
Dr. Kurnia Ningsih from Electrical Engineering Department Politeknik Negeri Semarang is today's moderator. And also for all participants who is joining in this event today, welcome to you all. Before we start the guest lecture session, I would like to read today's rundown as follows. Well. First agenda is the opening remark from Mr. Budi Prasetya as the Vice Director of Planning and Cooperation. Second agenda is the presentation from Professor Dr. Noyuki Kubota with the same presentation is Artificial Intelligence and Human Cognition in Problem Solving and Learning, continued by the Q&A session that will be led by the moderator. Then we'll have a token appreciation, photo session, and lastly, closing remark. Uh, without any further ado, we will start our first agenda with this opening remark. Dear Mr. Budi Prasetya, time is yours. I think Mr. Budi is still muted. Okay, so uh, once again, the Honorable Professor Dr. Naoyuko, Naoyuki Kubota from Tokyo Metropolitan University, uh, dear faculties from Polytechnic Negeri Semarang, our distinguished guests, uh, students from Polytechnic and then from other universities in Indonesia, and also some students uh, from overseas. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to all. We are pleased to most welcome Professor Nao for attending this uh, guest lecture. So we are pleased to extend our appreciation to Professor Nao who like to join and to give uh, his time to present uh, some topics on artificial intelligence. Yeah, uh, we know that uh, this topic is very interesting and very fast evolving right now. So this is kind of uh, sexy topics. That, that's why here yeah, we have a lot of uh, up, a lot of participants, either from Polytechnic and also from other university. Here yeah, we. Uh, have uh, for 700 students who join in this uh, uh, guest lecture. So we appreciate for all the attendance for the participants who join to this uh, guest lecture. We hope that uh, by joining to this guest lecture, we have a lot of benefits uh, by having new horizons in talking about uh, artificial intelligence. So once again, Thank you very much for Prof. Now. Yeah, we have uh, met Prof. Now last year in Yogyakarta, and it is a great pleasure for us to join here this morning in this uh, guest lecture. So once again, we hope that uh, you can join, you can enjoy this guest lecture. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Thank you, Mr. Budi. Uh, next, our agenda is the main agenda with the lecturing session. It will be moderated by Dr. Kanyaningsi. But before we start it, I would like to remind everyone to mute their audio. And if you have any question during the presentation, please write it on the chat box. Then we'll write it during the Q&A session. All right, to start the next session, Dr. Kanyaningsi, I'll give the time to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mani. Hello, everyone. I'm Kurnia Ningsi. I will serve as moderator for today's guest lectures. Topic for today's lecture series is artificial intelligence and cognitive robotics in problem solving and learning. Welcome to the speaker, Professor Dr. Naoyuki Kubota. I will read uh, at length about his biography. Currently, Professor Dr. Naoyuki Kubata is Director of the Eccentric System Research Center. Okay. 
Sorry. Okay. Currently, Professor Noiki Kubata is Director of Community Centric System Research Center, a Graduate School of System Design, Tokyo Metropolitan University, Japan. He is also currently Chair of IEEE System Men and Cybernetics Society, SMCS Japan Chapter. He obtained a Bachelor Engineering degree in 1992 from Osaka Koiku University, Japan and he obtained master engineering degree in 1994 from Hokkaido University, Japan, and he obtained doctor engineering degree in 1997 from Nagoya University, Japan. His research interests are co-evolutionary computing, fuzzy computing, topological mapping, cognitive robotics, social robotics, and informationally structured space. He was the visiting professor at the University of Portsmouth, UK in 2007 and 2009. He was also the invited visiting professor at the Seoul National University, Korea from 2009 to 2012. He has published more than 500 referred journal and conference papers. He received Best Paper Award of IEEE Icon in 1996 and also he received Best Paper Award of IEEE Chira in 1997 and so on. I would like to also welcome to all participants uh, that are already uh, joining us today online via Zoom and also YouTube. All participants may interact with speakers so you can write uh, your comments and questions through the chat in the Zoom or YouTube. Okay, thank you. Uh, now it's time uh, for Professor Naoyuki Kubota uh, to give a lecture. Professor Naoyuki, time is yours. Terima kasih, Nia. So I will share the screen first. Just a moment. Uh, Professor Noyuki, uh, yeah. in this lecture, we will divide into two sessions. Uh, first, uh, you will deliver within 40 minutes, and then I will uh, read some questions uh, from participants, and then uh, you can continue to the second session. Is it fine with you? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So, Please. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to stop using camera. So sorry. So, just a moment. Can you see the movie now? Yes, we can see your movie running well. Okay, thank you very much. Selamat pagi. Kunarukan, nama saya Naoyuki Kubota. Terima kasih. That's all. So today, I talk about artificial intelligence and cognitive robotics in problem solving and running. Artificial intelligence and robots have been applied to solve real world problems until now. And then, uh, knowledge and skill are acquired through the learning in the problem solving. So we can learn much from, uh, much from human problem solving and learning. And then we can improve the quality of artificial intelligence and the performance of robots. Therefore, so I prepare uh, this title as a talk today. Let's consider this problem, single stroke drawing. Uh, this problem is very easy. So like this, so if I start here, 
this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point as a result. So I can solve this problem. Do you know this problem? Seven bridges of uh, Kenny Berg. Can you solve this problem? So please consider, you know? So here is the starting point, for example, I take this bridge, this bridge, this bridge, this bridge, and then I go uh, here and take this bridge and this bridge. Oh, here is dead end. So actually, so we cannot solve this problem. Here, uh, you can use graph theory to discuss these problems. How about this? Can you connect nine point with four line segment? Please write yes or no at the chat box of the Zoom. I will use the chat box many times in my talk. Therefore, so please prepare uh, chat box uh, in your uh, Zoom meeting. So anyway, so if you uh, if my talk is boring, so please focus on so uh, to solve this problem. So first of all, I would like to thank you very much, especially Professor Toshio Fukuda, uh, Professor Fumio Harashima, and Professor uh, Fumio Kojima. So they uh, gave me a uh, very nice idea on this research field. And also I would like to say uh, thank you very much to my former student and friend and my laboratory members. I introduce students from Indonesia to you. So do you know somebody here? Do you know? So uh, you may know, so Dr. He Indra, so he changed and changed. So I have not yet been a dean, but now he is a vice director in Pence. So he is very famous. So I'm proud of him. So currently, uh, four Indonesian students belong to my laboratory to develop a uh, new methodology on artificial intelligence and cognitive robotics. So now, so I would like to explain my research background. We established two research groups on uh, service robot in Tokyo Metropolitan University, uh, in short, TMU. So in 2015, one of them is research core on service robot incubation hub to realize the open innovation of service robot with company researchers, customers, and users. We have developed various prototypes of service robot for elderly care, child care, information support, and navigation, and others. So furthermore, we have also developed the methodology of simultaneous localization and mapping and topological mapping as the key technology of robot, so like this. So this shows the outline of my talk. So first, I introduce the service robot developed in uh, TMU. Next, I explain the introduction to human intelligence and artificial intelligence. So this is a, one of my uh, this is one of my main topic uh, in my talk. And then I discuss cognitive robotics. Now I explain the background of service robot. Internet of Everything, IOE, is composed of Internet Human, Internet of Things, and Internet of Data or Digital. 
Sensor network devices are used to measure environmental data, while wearable devices are used to measure human data and biosignals. The measurement data are stored as big data through IOD. And then artificial intelligence, AI, and computational intelligence, CI, are used for the feature extraction, prediction, and learning. So in this way, cyber physical human interaction is done through IOE. So cloud computing is a key technology for X as a service to solve real world problems. So however, service dependent on local environment and place is also uh, important. So especially the expect expectation to mobility as a service, so MAS, mass, and robot as a service, RAS, so last. So these uh, kind of uh, technologies are very important. And then the expect expectation to mass and last has been increasing in the aging society. So we have developed various prototypes of robots in TMU. As I mentioned before, we are collaborating with small and medium size of companies in Tokyo areas because my university, TMU, is a public university managed by Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Here, the development of robot platform for interconnecting IOE and CPHS uh, we, uh, with AI and CI is a very important topic. So in this way, so we are developing for a robot platform to uh, to solve real world problem, so in Tokyo area. Now, I explain several example. So this shows uh, several example of uh, robot partners for physical support. So for example, uh, here, uh, this person says, uh, put away uh, this cup and then so this cup is uh, laying down on the table. At that time, this robot tried to use previously obtained knowledge to grasp this uh, cup, and then uh, this robot uh, put away uh, to uh, this area. So in this way, the robot should be adaptive to the environment. So we can apply robot partners to lifelong learning. Uh, we are developing a pair go system. The pair of human and AI, human and AI, uh, enjoy go game against the another uh, pair of human and AI. This is a kind of future coexistence of human and AI. So, uh, and also, so we can uh, apply so robot partners for uh, lifelong uh, learning. For example, here, uh, linguistic learning. So this robot can speak Japanese, Chinese, or uh, English. So when we talk to, uh, for example, so when we talk to this robot in Japanese, so this robot automatically translates uh, it into English or Chinese, and then so we can enjoy the chat with international uh, people through the internet. As a result, uh, so we are uh, conducting uh, social experiment between Japan and Taiwan. So this is one example of life of lifelong learning. So this slide uh, shows example of edutainment uh, elderly care and child care. Very small ball robot is inside of this robot. So uh, in this way, so we can apply so various prototype of ro robot to solve real world problems. Uh, 
sorry, entertainment, elderly care, and child care. Okay, now, so I explain so, uh, another example. So this shows the movie when the princess of Thailand visit to my university in uh, 2015, so five years ago. So in this way, we can conduct uh, welcome service by using multi robot theaters. So and also, so we are collaborating with other company. So this robot is developed with a Toshiba. So and also according to the request from the uh, uh, small companies in Tokyo area, we developed this kind of airport information support robot within one week. So this is composed of three planters, one, two, three, and then uh, the mobile base uh, is just a Roomba, so robot cleaner. So in order to discuss how to solve the problem, we try to develop a robot within one week and two weeks, and then we discuss the availability of this kind of robot, and then we try to improve the performance. So this is a, uh, our so research institute on uh, service robot incubation hub. So, and also uh, robot technologies can be applied to rehabilitation support so we develop uh, dri uh, driving simulator for rehabilitation support. So this shows the result of patient with uh, higher uh, brain dysfunction, so attention deficit. The result shows the possibility of unilateral uh, spatial neglect. So because the patient does not pay didn't pay attention to this left uh, left area. So this shows another example. So this shows the comparison result between healthy uh, subject and a patient with attention deficit. So obviously, so this patient didn't pay attention to this area. The patient uh, with attention deficit uh, often conduct uh, visual compensation visual compensation behaviors to confirm and know the current hand position. This kind of comp compensation behavior is very important in daily life, but uh, such a compensation behavior may be a risk of traffic accident in the uh, vehicle driving. So in this way, so we try to use so robot technology and artificial intelligence to solve so real world problem including so rehabilitation support elderly care uh, and others so i showed service robot developed in uh, tokyo metropolitan university so such a robot a service robot need human like intelligence and also we have to know human intelligence and, and human cognitive architecture, cognitive ability to apply robot partners to solve real world problems. So uh, next I discuss human intelligence to clarify the role and functions of artificial intelligence. So this shows the history of artificial intelligence. So you can find uh, better uh, teaching material at the web page. Therefore, so I don't uh, go into the deep, but I just want to explain one example. So, thinking machine was discussed in 1960. I showed the movie of Selfridge. So he is very famous, and I like so his idea. Therefore, I want to show uh, this movie. The thinking machine. Okay. 
Okay, what is thinking? This is a big problem to discuss. Okay, so what is artificial intelligence? So did you discuss the definition of artificial intelligence before? So I show so several examples. Uh, these definitions refer to human mind, problem solving, robots, uh, creativity. These are different each other. It, yeah, it's difficult to define AI because intelligence has many different features and functions. Can you define your own uh, thinking AI? So if you have some idea on the definition of AI, please write your idea at the chat box. I will uh, enjoy so reading your idea. Yeah. So let's consider the definition of AI. So I show one example. I like uh, the categorization of ABC of intelligence. Originally, uh, Bezdek proposed the idea uh, the ABC of intelligence in 1994. So we know our brain is governed by physical law and chemical reaction, but it's very difficult to explain intelligence by only using uh, physics and chemistry. In order to discover the essence of biological intelligence, we must reveal the alpha. This is very important. So what is alpha? So this is the aim of uh, biological intelligence research. Now I move to uh, discuss artificial intelligence. In the traditional AI, we try to explain the intelligence by symbolic uh, processing in the top-down approach of the external description. So on the other hand, uh, in CI, computational intelligence, so we try to explain the intelligence by the numerical processing in bottom-up approach of the, the, the internal description. So if I show uh, this, uh, this comparison, you can find the difference uh, of ap approach or thinking in AI and the CI. However, so currently, the border between AI and the CI is very fuzzy now. So machine learning methodology is already included in current AI. So uh, uh, 30 years ago or 50 years ago, uh, sometimes so perceptron uh, is removed from the idea or uh, from uh, AI or something. But currently, so we can discuss uh, AI, BI, and CI, so like this. Of course, we can discuss intelligence uh, from different point of view. So this shows my opinion. So under discussion. So if I have enough time, I would like to discuss intelligence with you. So like this. Now, let's consider uh, human intelligence by using a simple example. So we can extract uh, some features uh, from the handwritten characters. Uh, which do you think? This character, A or H? A or H? Uh, it looks A, I think. How about this? A or H? A Y. Actually, so this discussion was done in 1955 by Selfridge. This is the reason why. So I like so his discussion. Almost 75 years ago, he already discussed such a thing. Really, so amazing. Okay. Anyway. So this character uh, looks like H between T and E. Also, uh, this character 
looks A between C and T. So how about this? Okay, so please write down. So A or H, which? Oh, nobody, nobody write uh, anything out of the chat box. Uh, okay, so maybe so uh, you, you are not allowed to use chat box, no? Uh, okay, so somebody already uh, sent in the chat box, Professor. Uh -huh. The answer, okay. H. Yeah. yeah, H. Yeah. Maybe, so in the beginning, so we, I, uh, we think, so this is A, but, but, so please read this sentence. So cylinder head temperature, temperature. So do you see that the current AI can recognize this abbreviation? Of course. So if we give, so this kind of uh, processing to AI, the AI can do it. But this kind of uh, cognitive level of recognition is very large. So we can do such a thing in many, many different ways. So in such a situation, do you think that the current AI can recognize this abbreviation? So please write it, uh, yes or no. And, and uh, it reads at the chat box. Why AI can do it? Why AI cannot do it? And also, do you think that the current AI can understand this abbreviation? Maybe so AI can recognize this. However, maybe so AI didn't, don't, AI does not understand such a meaning of this abbreviation. So do you think that the uh, current AI can understand so this abbreviation? Yes or no? So please write uh, your idea. So please write yes or no and its reason at the chat box. Maybe so difficult to reply. Now, I show several, uh, several more so example. So Professor Fukushima uh, proposed a neocognitron. So this methodology was proposed in uh, almost 1980s, so uh, 40 years ago. What this? Can you recognize? So this drawing, can you recognize? Yeah, very difficult. However, if I clarify the hiding area, so here is hidden, here is hidden, here is hidden. So we can know this character. So this character uh, looks A, I think. How about this? Okay, please write the answer at the chat box. Put this. Put this. Uh -huh. Oh, very quick. Many people uh, answered. Oh. Mm. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, one. Oh, very good. So if, so I hide like this. So you look, uh, so this character is R. So most of you so replied R. Just only one person replied B. Oh, oh this is amazing. So Professor uh, Fukushima is a real, real so genius, I think. So he deal with this kind of problem by using neocognitron. So uh, in 20, uh, I don't remember exactly. So, uh, but yeah, so 
in his method. So for example, actually, so here, so in this example, so black area is one. So white area is represented as zero. In this way, we can make the input data to neocognitron. So have to deal with, so this area, have to deal with this area, hidden area. So uh, Professor Fukushima uh, introduced, so uh, hiding method or, uh, by using uh, some filters. And then, so this uh, neocognitron method can recognize this character uh, as R, uh, this character as B. Yeah, human intelligence is also amazing. Okay, so what is intelligence? So there are many definitions. There are many different definitions. So it's difficult to define. So actually, so we want to uh, tell everything about intelligence when we try to define intelligence. Why? So because, so because we know individuals differ from one other in their ability. So each person has different abilities. So therefore it is very difficult to define intelligence explicitly. This is one reason why so it is difficult to define the intelligence. However, so we have to know uh, the definition, the function and ability of intelligence. So I follow uh, the definition uh, of uh, intelligence, but according to American Heritage Dictionary. So I try to use American Heritage Dictionary from now. So I just focus on uh, the definition referred uh, from American Heritage Dictionary. So here, so cognition is important to acquire, understand, and use knowledge. So therefore, so I try to check the definition of cognition. The cognition is defined as a mental process of knowing, including aspects such as awareness, perception, reasoning, and uh, judgment. So what is perception? So perception is defined as the process of perceiving something with the sense, sense, okay? So sensing, uh, sensing, so to become aware of. So now, so let's consider cognition and perception. So let's consider uh, this problem. So draw two lines to divide the following point. So you can use the two, two lines to divide the following point. How to divide? So you cannot use chat box therefore, so please just consider. You can use two line segments to divide. I did it. Do you agree with this segmentation? Most of all, uh, most, most of you so agree with my suggestion. So here, so if you are aware of the closeness of data distribution, so do, uh, you can do it. You can do it. So here, this is a point. What feature do you use? So we can use several features from the data distribution. But so in this example, so I just say, so please draw two lines. So therefore, so you just uh, uh, draw these two lines like this. So this kind of task is called so clustering. So how about this? 
So now, so we change the problem like this. Draw one line segment to divide the following point. How can you draw the line? Just only one line. This is my answer. Do you agree with this segmentation? The constraint is uh, to use only one line. Therefore, I draw this line. As I introduced the idea of clustering, so in this example, so can you call this segmentation clustering? Can you call? Of course, you are aware of both the difference of color and closeness of data distribution, but you just focus on the color distribution and select it. Therefore, so this task is also uh, clustering. On the other hand, if I say, can you divide the data set into green data and blue data? Here, so I tell you how to divide. Therefore, so this kind of task is called classification. Here, the teaching data, uh, teaching signal is given to you. So blue or green, so I gave you. So therefore, this kind of learning methodology is called supervised learning. On the other hand, so in case of clustering, so uh, you are not asked to classify the data according to the color. Therefore, so this task is still in clustering. So we don't, I don't tell you how to divide. Therefore, this kind of approach is called unsupervised learning. What do you want to do? So this is a point. So this shows a summary of clustering and classification. So I give, so data uh, given like this. The data structure uh, is just so X and Y. So this is a coordinate of the point. And also, so we can give uh, color information, RGB. So here, so uh, if we don't tell uh, how to divide, so this is clustering. So this means the input is X. As the input X is defined as X, Y, R, G, and B. The output is boundary. So this is a clustering task. On the other hand, uh, if I give to, uh, I, gi uh, I give the coordinate x and y only, and then the output is defined as uh, RGB. So this mapping uh, is called class uh, called classification. So therefore, so uh, according to our intention, so we can choose a uh, clustering or a classification like this. Uh, this is a basic idea of machine learning. So I just explained the basic idea of classification and clustering. Now, so I move to another uh, keyword, understanding. What this? What this? Please write the answer out of the chat box. At this. Oh, nobody replied. Oh, some people are right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of people say, so this is apple. These are apples. So there are two apples or something. Why can you say? Why? Oh, different color, uh, very nice. Actually, so you can uh, find, you can find leaves. So there are leaves uh, on the top of apples. Why you didn't say, 
oh, this is leaves. Uh, these are leaves. They are leaves or something. Why? This is a point. So I try to check the definition of understanding, but so I cannot find a good uh, definition. So therefore, so I try to define understanding. So of course, uh, many people, many people define, uh, have, have defined uh, the, the meaning of understanding. So, but there are uh, no definition like this at the uh, dictionaries. So actually, so I want to define understanding as the ability of segmentation and identification. So here, so first we try to conduct segmentation. Segmentation means to cut uh, some important features from the uh, image. And then after that, so we try to understand, we try to understand uh, what is this in the cut area. So in this way, so we can uh, understand something by segmentation and identification. So this is one example of segmentation problem. So when you gaze uh, at the white area, white area here, at the time the black area becomes background, background. On the other hand, if you focus on black area, uh, the white area uh, becomes background. So this is called figure ground reversal. Uh, this is another example. Asia uh, draws so many different of paints, so like this. This is very interesting. So we can enjoy uh, observing so this uh, this paint. How about this? When you gaze at the white area, the black area also becomes background. At the time, you can find some animal or object according to your memory. Yeah, very interesting painting. So in this way, so we can discuss the understanding by using segmentation and identification. So here, so segmentation is done by clustering and also identification is done by classification. This is a simple idea, but uh, these two ideas are very important to discuss the role and ability of artificial intelligence. So now I show a different example. So this shows a simple classification, uh, these are uh, uh, simple classification example. So you can conduct the segmentation and identification. So by using so line segment, you can conduct uh, segmentation and then you can understand the color of each point. So now, so I check the detail about our human uh, recognition. So here, So we can uh, write two conditions. So X, for example here, so X2 plus X1 is larger than two and X2 minus X1 is larger than minus one. So uh, we can recognize. So uh, this is red. So if we use if then do, so we can write like this. If X2 and uh, X2 plus uh, x1 is larger than 2, then y1 is uh, y1 is 1. So, and also, so here, then uh, y2 uh, equal 1. And next, so if y1 and y2 is equal to 2, then let. So in this way, so we can represent 
uh, if then rules like this to solve this problem. So if we use network representation like this, so this node is uh, this node is represented as the first condition, and so this node is represented as the second condition, and they are out of uh, here y1 and y2. So this node is uh, used to represent this rule. And then so we can obtain the uh, output. So in this way, so we can uh, solve this kind of classific classification task by using network architecture. So if uh, actually, so this is very simple, but if we prepare so many nodes here, so neurons and so multi-layer architecture, so we may solve a large scale of problems. This is a basic idea of neural computing. I explain the uh, next example. So here uh, we use so pixel data as input uh, input so like this. So after uh, after the next layer, so we can conduct feature extraction so edge detection or something like that. So at, and then so we can. Uh, we, we can extract some facial features uh, by combining these local features. And this, uh, this shows almost a final stage. So you can understand the human faces. So, and so there are many different types of human face in, included in this level. So in this way, so if we use so uh, deep layer, deep hidden layers uh, for uh, neural computing, so we can obtain this kind of recognition ability. So this shows uh, one example. So we have applied uh, deep learning, uh, deep learning methodologies for human robot communication, so human detection and uh, gesture recognition and others. So especially so human facial direction here human facial direction is very important. So because we have to estimate human intention. Therefore, so this attention extraction is very important. Here, uh, we conduct object recognition to areas, to areas according to the human attention. In this way, so we can uh, realize uh, natural human robot communication and interaction by using uh, these methods. So in this way, we can realize clustering and classification by AI. So we applied human behavior prediction and so human friendly communication by using so life loops. This is one of my uh, research topic. So I explained so clustering and uh, classification. So let's consider sensing. Do you remember this problem? So if, uh, did you solve this problem? Did you solve? So you, some of you know the answer. So let's consider the problem as shown in the beginning. Okay, so if we connect a point with other point one by one, so we cannot solve this problem. What is a problem? So we have been aware of this kind of box as a range of attention. As I mentioned before, so attention is very important. So when we solve this kind of problem, we make uh, some kind of restriction or a constraint without unconsciousness. This is a problem, okay? So this is a solution. In order to solve this problem, so we have to ex or reduce the range of attention to solve a problem. So this is a human cognitive ability. So our cognition is very flexible. 
therefore, so we can solve our problem. So now uh, we uh, try to discuss how to use artificial intelligence to solve this problem. So as I mentioned before, uh, as I mentioned before, so if we try to connect uh, each point uh, one by one, we cannot solve the problem. Therefore, we try to extend the search space like this. So if we use if we use real numbers to represent a line segment, but so real numbers are very huge, it is very difficult to solve. In order to reduce the search space, so we can use uh, a set of integers like this, but uh, still difficult to solve. So we have to reduce the search space, I think. Now, how to re reduce the search space? So we can use a set of lines connecting two point or more point. Actually, so in the original problem, we try to connect a several lines, but in this stage, so we uh, relieve uh, this constraint. First, we try to make a candidate line segment, so like this. So as a result, so we can prepare uh, these lines. So as a result, this is a point. The number of line segment is countable and finite. The original problem, okay, this is a point. Or in the original uh, problem is to try to connect nine points. Now we change the problem. A new problem is to choose four line segment. So in this way, so we may solve the problem. First, so we collect uh, some data from this problem by trial and error. And finally, we can design the suitable search space to solve. So what should you perceive to solve a problem? This is a point. We have to define the search space beforehand to uh, make a candidate solution, but we cannot understand what to perceive until we solve the problem. After we solve the problem, we can design the search space. This is a problem. On the other hand, this is human uh, cognitive ability. Owing to the to higher uh, cognitive ability, human high, uh, cognitive ability, so we can design the search space. And then we can apply this kind of uh, search space and uh, such method uh, to AI. So, and also uh, finite time and so finite process, the importance of uh, finiteness uh, is, is uh, appealed in the definition of algorithm. So this is also important discussion. Okay, now I have to, so hurry up. So now we deal uh, uh, we deal uh, with uh, uh, deal with how to solve this problem. For example, first three lines are selected uh, here, and then finally, so I can choose one line segment from the possible uh, candidate. So from so three lines, and then if we try we, we use this uh, line, so I cannot solve. If I use, I select this line, I can solve. And if I select this line, I cannot solve. So how to evaluate which is better? So we have to calculate, uh, we have to calculate uh, some evaluation factor. So if uh, we compare, so these two uh, candidate solution, so we can calculate two point difference and also uh, the difference uh, uh, with the uh, right answer, 
is one line segment. So in this case, so here, uh, if we choose, so this one, at the time, so eight point uh, connected covers. So in this example, so one point different. And also, so difference is one line segment. So in this example, we have to deal with discrete, discrete uh, measurement uh, value. So in order to uh, discuss the similarity or uh, some kind of criteria, so we have to use some distance information. So can you evaluate? So these two are similar or not? Very difficult. So and also I uh, I explained another example of uh, character recognition A or H. So if so we calculate the similarity between this character and this character. So we may use the uh, topological feature. So this is closed or open, and also the uh, some kind of uh, similarity like this. Here, uh, norm is a concept of length, a map that as, uh, assigns a length uh, to a vector. So, so this is a definition. I don't uh, go into the deep, but I just show. So this is a definition of distance. So you maybe so some of you use Manhattan distance uh, and of course so Euclidean distance. So can you write so Manhattan distance and Euclidean distance? Ah, uh, this is easy. Okay, in case of Euclidean distance, so the length is this. How about this Manhattan distance? This is one dimensional norm, L1 norm. So like this. How about this? In case of L infinity norm, actually, so here uh, we can choose the largest value in uh, is element. So this is applied to Chebyshev distance here. So maximum one is selected uh, from the uh, distance uh, between uh, each element of xi and yi. So have to write the distance. Can you write? Can you draw? So like this, of course, so we can write uh, here to, from here to here. Okay, anyway, so uh, we so first uh, we try to consider a human intelligence and then so we try to consider mathematical formulation and then so we try to solve the problem. So this is how to use artificial intelligence to uh, solve a problem. Okay, so this is uh, uh, my first part. So I explain uh, the basic idea of artificial intelligence, so clustering, class, uh, classification, and that uh, have to solve the problem. So in order to solve a problem, so design of such space is very important, but so we cannot de de design or define the such space until we solve a problem. This is a problem, but this is human cognitive ability. So we try to uh, imitate a human-like intelligence to solve a problem. Okay, yes. Uh, thank you very much. So I stop the first part now. Thank you very much, Professor Naoyuki. It is very interesting talk. I received a questions uh, from uh, Mr. Nobi Bagus Muliawan from Pens. He asked, I think he asked about segmentations. What is uh, X1 and X2 in specific or reality? Is it color value or H coordinate? Could you please? Uh, 
Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry. So I don't understand the question. So this one. Mas bagus. Nobi bagus muliawan from Pens. Yeah. Are you there? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, maybe you can ask by yourself. No okay, please. Uh, okay, so I don't understand I uh, what is X1 and X2. Uh -huh. uh, X, can you explain? Uh, X1 <laughs> and X2. So uh, this axis is X1, this axis is X2. Uh, X1 and X2, this represents, represent what? Sir? Uh, do you mean X? Uh... He asked about X1 and X2 represented a word, Professor Now, Oh, this is just a sign, sorry. Actually, so this is a, a, a simple classification problem. Yeah, so so we uh, we obtain severe data, so like this. At the time, so data distribution like this. So uh, red data uh, is here, so blue data uh, is here. At the time, so we try to divide these two data by using so this line, okay? This is just a so mathematical example, not a physical or so real data. Okay. Is that fine? Yeah, is that fine, Mas Bagus? Hello, Mas Nobi Thanks, Bagus. Uh, I think I would like to look forward. <laughs> okay, thank you. I received another question uh, sending me privately. What is the difference uh, between cognitive robotic and artificial intelligence? Is it possible we combine both of them in technology? And what is the example in our life? Oh, very big question. Yeah. From Antonia Polines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, yeah. So as an elementary technology, so we can use uh, deep learning method, especially so CNN. So convolutional neural network is very useful to uh, recognize uh, our daily life. So for example, so object recognition, uh, human face recognition, uh, gesture recognition, and best uh, behavior recognition. But this is a point. So we can uh, recognize individual uh, factors. So uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this, this is human A. So this is object B or something. However, we have to uh, estimate, for example, in this example, so we have to estimate the human intention. So otherwise, so we cannot uh, use the recognition result. Of course, so we can uh, estimate, so this person is closing door, of course. However, why? Did this person close the door? The robot have to understand the reason. In order to estimate the reason, so we, uh, this robot should correct many, uh, so huge size of life logs. So one behavior is connected to the next behavior. Okay, so this means so if we can. Uh, extract the relationship between previous behavior and next behavior. So uh, we can estimate human intention. So in this example, so this person is looking for wine glass. So because, so this person bought wine bottle here. Okay, after that, he is moving to this area. So now, so wine glass is uh, recognized. So this uh, person uh, try to grasp the wine grasp? Oh no, <laughs> okay, sorry. At that time, so the human uh, robot estimation uh, is not correct. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, so do you understand? Yeah, so actually, so we, uh, we can so realize each elemental recognition but we have to integrate recognition result according to human daily life. 
So this is a very tough work. So in our research, we try to use uh, episodic memory. So there are several uh, different episodes. So through the uh, through the experiment. So finally, so I hope so this person tried to uh, grasp wine grass. Oh, wine grass. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> so he, yeah, he he was uh, wondering. So which grass uh, does this person try to use to drink wine or something? So anyway, so we need so long time of episodic memory like this. And then, so we can predict human next uh, behavior. If estimated behavior is different uh, from real action, at that time, we may guess. So this person may be dementia or something. So in this way, so uh, we try to use this kind of prediction system for elderly care. This is one of my research uh, projects. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Brock. Now, okay, I think uh, you may continue uh, in the second session. Irfan, are you among us? Can I? Okay. Yeah, please. April is at school. So I, okay, so now, so I move to the second topic, so cognitive robotics. I already explained the basic idea of artificial intelligence and how to use artificial intelligence. Of course, I, I didn't cover all of uh, AI, but so we can try to use such an idea to robotics. So I will explain the bas uh, basic idea of robotics, and then so I explain several uh, uh, se several example. So done in my laboratory. So every time, so I try to uh, I try to discuss a basic definition of each keyword. So I like so several important keywords. So actually, uh, every uh, researcher has different viewpoint to towards intelligence. So Pfeiffer's idea is very famous. So this is a definition of intelligence uh, by Pfeiffer. So he defined the intelligence as the ability to survive within a natural environment. So he didn't refer to knowledge, skill, cognition, or other keyword. He just defined. But so we can understand, oh, this definition is also very nice. Of course, we need the intelligence to survive. Yeah, that's enough. So if we use this uh, definition, so we can apply this definition to a cat, animal, uh, frog, fish, amoeba, or something. Yeah, this is interesting. So anyway, uh, in the beginning, uh, so I like I like this definition. This uh, this definition is also very interesting. Okay. So Brady, Michael Brady uh, defined robotics research as the intelligent connection of perception to action. Uh, this definition, so I found this definition uh, in the book written in 1986 or seven, I don't remember. But this definition is also elegant, why? When we try to define the robotics, we try to use sensors, actuators, computers, uh, or so programs or something. 
but he didn't use any mechanical or electrical keyword in his definition. This is elegant. Yeah. He just defined intelligent connection from perception to action. So I like this definition. Uh, and also Toshi, <laughs> Professor Toshi of Kuda also like this definition. So when I was a PhD student, he used the uh, title of his keynote speech, Perception to Action, so many times. So more than 20 years ago. Yeah, very interesting. So anyway, so we can discuss so robotics research from the viewpoint of intelligent connection from perception to action. So like this. So, uh, sorry. Actually, so this should be animated. So in the beginning, uh, so I, I, I try to use, I'm sorry. Okay, so the first, so perception and so the, So in the, in the beginning, so we try, uh, we try to give a, a task to the robot and then the robot have to have to perceive the environment like this. Actually, it is very difficult to deal with real environmental conditions. Therefore, we have to uh, uh, represent environmental condition like this. Here, we try to use polygonal uh, representation. And then uh, we can find some, some possible route or a path like this. Finally, uh, the robot try to uh, try to uh, trace the target path like this. This is a typical uh, this is a typical uh, problem solving in robotics. I show actually so this is the, the robotics. So in order to deal with so real workspace, we have to uh, use uh, some representation method. There are two main map building method of polygonal approach and grid mapping like this. I show an example of polygonal maps. So we can use several polygons to represent so this environment. If we use the uh, visibility graph, we can find the shortest path uh, from start to goal. So visibility graph, so like this. So however, the robot may collide with the uh, obstacle. Of course, this is the shortest, but this uh, path uh, is also dangerous. On the other hand, uh, if we use so Voronoi diagram, so Voronoi di diagram so is generated by using the uh, cent uh, central point between uh, between the the line segment obtained by visibility graph. So if we use Voronoi di diagram, so we can find the safest path, but the path is very redundant. So this path is longer than, much longer than shortest path. So therefore, so we try to use, uh, we try to combine these two approach. So basically, so we can use topological mapping method to represent, so environmental map so like this environmental map. So each object is represented by a set of node and edge. The other is load map approach. So we can uh, represent the uh, path by using that set of node and edge. So like this. So I show several examples. Actually, so map building includes many difficulties. What is the problem in map building? 
This shows an example of map building by using dedragoning. Dedragoning means so sometimes so we can use uh, encoders or uh, attached to the wheel. Uh, uh, actually, so measurement error is very huge. So this robot is moving uh, from here to here uh, by taking a straight line. However, its corresponding map is very bending like this. Clasp, clasp. So we could not obtain feasible map owing to the measurement noise and localization error. In order to conduct a map building, we have to use a good localization method. So uh, we conducted this experiment uh, 70 years ago. So by using so our method, so we can build a map. Here you can find uh, the shape of cars. There are several cars here. This one, this one, this one, cars. So anyway, according to the complicated uh, environment, so we can obtain the map. So here, what is the problem? So this kind of pro, uh, research topic is called simultaneous localization and mapping. In short, SRAM. In order to localize the robot position, robot position, the robot refers to the exact uh, environmental map. So here. On the other hand, in order to build an environmental map, the robot must use the exact self position. So here, so map and position uh, may, uh, uh, refer to each other. This is a coupling mechanism or uh, nesting each other. So therefore, if uh, if so, we cannot use exact map. The localization error uh, is very become very high. On the other hand, so uh, the the localization error is very high. So we cannot uh, build a map exactly. Therefore. Uh, we need high accuracy in both localization and map building. So this is a, a problem in the research of uh, lo robotics. SRAM is one of the most important technologies in robotics. So I have, so we have proposed many different methodologies on map building. As I mentioned before, there are two main approaches to conduct the um, uh, to conduct uh, the environmental map building. So we developed a multi-scale methodology of grid mapping and topological mapping like this. So I will explain uh, grid map uh, grid mapping methodology. So this shows the procedure of a three-dimensional map building. So in this example, we, we try to use uh, image processing. So these are two original image. Uh, this is a current image. Uh, I don't remember. So this is current uh, image. This is a previous image. We try to use the difference bet uh, between these two images. And then we try to build three-dimensional map. So shift GPU. A shift GPU extracts the candidate uh, pairs of corresponding point between two points, uh, two images. So there are uh, pairs of corresponding point. So this is correct pair. So we call this is in layer. So mismatching pair is called outlier. So in order to remove outliers, and then we obtain the corresponding uh, point, a good corresponding point, and then we can build a three-dimensional map building. So in order to find good uh, appearance of corresponding point, so uh, random sa sample consensus, in short, RANSAC. So RANSAC is often used to realize do it. But the Lanzac, the performance of Lanzac is not enough. In order to improve the performance, we propose uh, evolution strategy sample consensus. As a result, 
the number of uh, co correct pairs uh, is increased uh, comparing with uh, standard uh, Lanzac method. As a result, we can improve the performance of three-dimensional map building. So this shows an example. Next, so I will explain uh, the detail of map building. As I mentioned before, uh, another approach is topological mapping, so like this. So now, so I will explain so how to realize topological mapping to extract environmental features from point of cloud. So I go back to the a basic idea of clustering. Do you remember? So you know the basic approach of clustering. So we can conduct a cl clustering, so like this. So this is a simple example. How about this? Two points are added to the data distribution. So how many groups can you divide the data into? Can you conduct clustering here? I think it is very difficult to divide. In such a problem, we can extract some features uh, of the data distribution by a set of node and edge. So this is a topological mapping. So one of the famous topological mapping method is self-organizing map. So self-organizing map is very useful to extract the unknown hidden features from high, uh, high dimensional data set. So in case of a small size of data distribution, this is one example of the learning process of self-organizing map. As you see, a self-organizing map cannot conduct the explicit clustering because the edge or a node, uh, so edge and node are, cannot uh, removed from the uh, topological map uh, in the original uh, self-organizing map. Of course, we can apply self-organizing map. So however, so this problem is not suitable for self-organizing map to uh, to realize clustering. Therefore, so uh, we try to use growing neural gas. So actually, so I started to you I started using growing neural gas almost 20 years ago, and then so after that I tried to use growing neural gas and propose a several extension method of growing neural gas. So I just uh, explain the basic idea of growing neural gas. Oh, sorry. So first, in the initialization, we prepare two or three nodes and their edge connection like this. When the next uh, data is uh, given to the network, the nearest and nearest and second nearest node are selected like this. If there is no edge between these two edges, a new edge is added to the network. In this way, so we can extend the network, topological network like this. After several iterations, a new node uh, is added to the network owing to the sum of errors calculated by the distance to the input. In, the, in this example, uh, there are the nearest, nearest and the second nearest uh, node selected, but this dot, this dotted line uh, edge is not selected for several iterations. At the time, so this edge connection is meaningless. As a result, so this line, this dotted line is removed from the network. As a result, uh, we can obtain the topological map like this. So here, this is a point. So we can realize the so clustering, so distributed uh, clusters like this, and also we can obtain the topological map inside of each cluster. 
this is a performance uh, of growing neural grass. This is very useful. We can conduct uh, topological mapping and clustering simultaneously. Uh, this shows the comparison result. So as I, show, as I showed you, cell organizing map and also several different methods are proposed, growing cell structures and, and others. So we started to use growing neural gas uh, by focusing on the uh, advantage. So we applied, so growing neural gas uh, for the three-dimensional surface modeling. So, and also environmental uh, modeling like this. So we can extract so normal vectors from the obtained, uh, obtained so topological map, and then we can understand uh, here is flat or not, here is surface or not. So in this way, so we can apply uh, growing neural gas. So, uh, however, so we uh, we have to improve the performance to solve real world problem. Therefore, so we propose uh, several different methods. Uh, since the original growing neural gas uses online learning, uh, like uh, like self organizing map. Therefore, the learning stability is not so good. As a result, so we propose a batch learning method. So this shows a learning algorithm. The first term uh, is used to evaluate the clustering performance, the sum of distance between the sampling data uh, and its corresponding nearest node. The second term is important. So this term is to is used to evaluate the connectivity in the topological map based on the distance. So here we use the fuzzy C means to evaluate the, uh, the degree of membership to connected, uh, connected uh, node in the topological map. So we don't uh, explain the detail. If you are interested in the topological mapping method, uh, please ask me so I will uh, explain the, the detail of this procedure uh, later. Anyway, so this shows the flowchart of the batch learning. So uh, after calculating uh, the distance on the given data, uh, we can update edge and node so simultaneous, uh, simultaneously. So as a result, so we can improve the performance of learning stability. So, and, and after that, uh, we propose the multi-layer approach. So, multi-layer approach. The standard batch learning is done in the first layer. Uh, input to the higher layer of GNG is the position of node. The position of node uh, at the lower layer of GNG. And then, so we can uh, extract hierarchical structure uh, from the obtained uh, topological maps, so like this. So I just show some example. So in the uh, in the lowest uh, lowest layer, we can extract a topological feature uh, of data distribution. In this example, we can conduct uh, clustering and also uh, some uh, some topological structure are extracted inside of clusters, so like this. So this is a second layer. At that time, so each uh, cluster are connected each other in the highest level. So every cluster is connected each other. So like this. In this way, so we can extract a hierarchical structure. So this shows a comparison uh, between uh, batch learning method. So the left uh, is batch learning algorithm. The right is online or standard growing neural gas. The learning stability is very stable comparing to uh, online approach. So this shows another example. This is very clear. So we can conduct, so we can conduct feature extraction by using multi-layer batch learning and uh, growing neural gas, so like this and like this. So we apply uh, 
grid mapping and topological mapping simultaneously like this. As a result, so we try to build an exact uh, map building and also we try to extract the topological structure of the map. So topological structure is applied to different example. So I show another example of topological mapping. These are example of multi robot formation behavior. So we can apply topological uh, mapping method to enclosing formation behavior. So this is a patient or uh, some person laying on the ground. So this uh, these three robot find this person and then uh, conduct some monitoring of this robot from three different uh, viewpoint. So we can realize uh, many different types of formation behavior like this by using so three mobile robots. I show uh, enclosing behavior by using topological mapping. So I explain the uh, procedure of multi robot enclosing formation behavior. So first, uh, the mobile robot conduct uh, data collection on the free areas, free areas surrounding uh, object. And then uh, we conduct the topological feature extraction in the first layer of multi-layer growing neural gas. So finally, so we can decide the optimal measurement point, measurement point of this is a position of each robot. In this example, five robots are uh, applied to uh, observe this target object. I show an example of enclosing formation behavior for uh, remote monitoring. After no, after the data collection, but but learning is done. So like this, uh, this is a uh, okay, and then. Ah, sorry. So I didn't explain important things. Prof Nao? Yeah. Uh, uh, um, yeah. 10 minutes later, five or 10 okay. minutes. Okay, thank yes. you. Okay, so this is, uh, this shows. Okay, so I show another example. Uh, so here, uh, several target objects. So there are uh, two target objects for the enclosing behavior. So according to the uh, batch learning method, so we can uh, extract some movable area and then uh, conduct, uh, conduct so uh, formation behavior so like this so if when we remove one robot here at, uh, and also two robots here its corresponding optimal formation is automatically updated like this okay so i have to uh, hurry up okay this is another example as i mentioned before so several uh, uh, by using clustering approach, we can automatically divide this task into two subtasks. So one is uh, one is uh, object one tracking, the other is object two tracking. So this is done by automatically by using so this method. So this shows the uh, experimental result. Now, so I explain another example. I discuss, I will discuss online adaptability of growing neural gas to dynamic data distribution. This is a learning process of the original GNG here. The data distribution is moving uh, from here to here. So it's difficult to remove this data node and edge. So GNG with so utility was proposed to improve the online adaptability, but the performance is uh, not enough. Therefore, so we propose uh, GNG group, uh, utility two uh, and uh, apply 
uh, this method to real time topological ex uh, feature extraction. The computational cost uh, of GNG U2 is very low, and we have applied GNG U2 to various real time feature extraction programs like this. So, this was done 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. But so the performance is very good. So we apply so this method to elderly care and monitoring system. So like this, I skip. So now I explain the cognitive approach. So this is uh, another uh, the one of main topics today's talk. So as I mentioned before, uh, co uh, cognitive architecture is very important. So here. Robotics, uh, so Michael Brady defines intelligence, uh, robotics as intelligent connection from perception to action. We have to consider the total architecture. So, cognitive model is composed of cognitive architecture and knowledge. Maybe you know, uh, neural network model is composed of neural network architecture and uh, land parameters. So this is similar with the idea of cognitive model. So there are so many cognitive architectures have been proposed until now, but so this approach is uh, used to explain human information processing architecture. So therefore it is very difficult to apply, apply this idea to real world robots. So on the other hand, one of them is subsumption architecture. So I'm sorry, so I don't have enough time. So I skip the detail. Yeah, we have to so uh, consider human cognitive intelligence. I, tr I try to extract some features from sci uh, cognitive science, and then we try to in, uh, incorporate important idea so into our robot. So I skip something. So this is a definition of cognitive robotics from my viewpoint. The study on cognitive robotics so mainly deal with human-like intelligence. Human-like intelligence uh, important. So this is a different from the basic idea of intelligent robot. Actually, so in the uh, research uh, of cognitive robotics, we focus on the total cognitive architecture uh, and uh, total cognitive mechanisms such as cognitive development, behavior acquisition, uh, and social communication. So this shows the uh, relationship between intelligent robot cognitive robotics and social robotics. So in uh, this methodology, uh, based on different science, in case of cognitive robotics, we focus on cognitive science, in case of ro intelligent robotics, so we focus on computer science as a background knowledge. On the other hand, in case of social robotics, we focus on social science. So actually, in uh, these three approaches are very similar, but the basic idea or uh, fundamental architecture is different. So we can divide uh, uh, research direction of cognitive robotics, so like this. So the first one is cognitive development. Cognitive development, the aim of cognitive development is to investigate the theory and essence of the primitive stage of human cognitive development by using robots based on constructivism. The aim of behavior acquisition is to investigate the theory and methodology for human-like behavior acquisition, so like uh, imitative learning, social uh, learning, observational learning or something. The aim of uh, communi uh, social communication uh, is to investigate the theory and the methodology on social communication. But here, so we often so assume the knowledge and the skill uh, uh, given to the robot. Uh, after, uh, by using so predefined knowledge and skill, we can observe the human robot interaction or communication uh, in their world. This is the aim of social communication. So this research uh, can uh, discuss from the theoretical, theoretical viewpoint and the practical viewpoint. 
So I explain the one example. So we uh, we try to uh, build a good a cognitive architecture. We try to use the, this kind of multi -lex, uh, lex robot. So this robot can climb uh, the ladders so like this. So I don't uh, explain the detail. So here, in order to here, so in order to uh, in order to uh, in order to take this kind of so climbing behavior, the robot uh, this robot have to uh, recognize uh, side bars, uh, side bars, uh, vertical and horizontal bars like this to re re recognize this is a ladder. So after that, so the robot uh, have to decide, have to climb up according to the distance between two steps. Okay, so this is a, a topological extraction. As I mentioned before, topological mapping is very useful to extract environmental feature, and then the robot finds the grasping point uh, in the ladder here. So this shows one example. So this robot try to climbing up from here to here. And also, this is very difficult task. So it is very difficult to press the body uh, on the top of this area. Please uh, assume, actually, so you had uh, some experience uh, this kind of behavior, but there is no bar upper side. This is a very difficult task. At the time, the robot have to uh, press uh, this body on the uh, on, on on the top of this area by a co uh, considering the embodiment or physical uh, condition. This is another example. The uh, the ladder is swinging, but according to this cognitive uh, uh, mechanism, this robot can grasp. But after that, this robot cannot climb up because there is no sensors on the uh, foot, on the bottom area. So this robot uh, has uh, some sensors on the uh, back uh, back or top of this robot and in front of face area only. Therefore, after that, this robot cannot uh, climb up. So this is another example. So we try to uh, regulate the uh, uh, locomotion behavior. So we use central pattern generators and the neural uh, recurrent neural network. This is an example of so central pattern generator, and then so there is some some uh, error. So this leg cannot move here at the time owing to the update of uh, connectivity or way to update. This robot can continue working. So like this here, uh, left or uh, forward limb was injured, but uh, this robot can uh, continue uh, taking locomotion like this. Okay, uh, this is almost uh, the, uh, the last. So as I mentioned before, so we uh, use topological mapping to extract uh, environmental features. So like this at the time, so uh the, the, there is so moving obstacle or a sudden obstacle uh, so appears in front of the robot at the time the uh, the robot focus on such a change and then the robot try to find different uh, stepping point so this is a real time perception as i mentioned before at the uh, first talk, perception and cognition are very important. Of course, so in order to deal with dynamic or unknown environment, the robot have to have higher level of cognitive uh, mechanism. So perception is very important. In such a uh, situation, so we try to use topological mapping, so like this. Okay. So this is uh, the uh, almost the last one. Which is better? So finally, I would like to discuss the learning process. If the data distribution going back to the uh, original or initial position, GNG, so this 
a node can perceive. So the data is going back from here. So, so if the data distribution so goes back to the initial position, we can use the previous node to perceive it. This means this GNG network of course, these uh, these node and and edge uh, looks like uh, looks looks like so dead node or edge, but we can reuse so this node. Actually, this means this network has a memory. I can say. On the other hand, if the data distribution goes back to the initial position. So this growing neural gas is updating, updating, and updating. Therefore, this uh, growing neural gas uh, cannot understand. So this is previous memory. This means we don't remember anything. Which is better? This is better? This is better? So this approach has a memory. This method does not have a memory. So actually, we cannot predict the future situation. Therefore, it is very difficult to say which is better. But this is a, this is an important viewpoint. So we can uh, we can use this kind of methodology. So uh, of course, so we can use. Uh, convolutional uh, neural network or deep learning method, if we try to use such approach as an online learning at that time, so we can learn, the neural network can learn something, but neural network may forget something. So we can learn the current data, but we cannot remember all, which is better. So what should we remember or forget? It is very difficult to answer, reply. Yeah, recently various types of deep learning methods have been applied to autonomous uh, mobile robot and self-driving car. Of course, we can use these kind of AI, but how? How to guarantee the performance? It is very difficult. On the other hand, we should uh, such a uh, learning, such a methodology should be updated according to the kind of situation when the network or AI run uh, something at the time the AI may forget something. We have to deal with this kind of problem. This is very diff difficult and tough work, I think. Okay, so finally, I will uh, I will uh, summarize my talk. I introduced my current research in AI and robotics while I discuss human intelligence from the viewpoint of problem solving and learning. Original meaning, original meaning of human in the loop is that the critical decision should be done by a human, not using only automatic decision making only by a system. However, we need this kind of uh, idea in the machine learning. In order to improve the performance of machine learning, we need human in the loop machine learning methodology. Human experts can find the critical errors in the teaching data. So actually, so data scientists can conduct so machine learning, but if they are not expert on such a domain, uh, the, uh, data scientists cannot find the critical errors. This is a problem. So as a result, so we need a human expert. Human expert can find the critical errors in the teaching data. As a result, we can avoid uh, critical errors in the decision making. By the way, as I mentioned before, uh, can you use self-driving car, uh, continuing, uh, so learning, uh, keeping learning? Actually, can you use such an autonomous system? Of course, autonomous system can learn something, but may forget something. Can you use? For example, self-driving car. So many people don't rely on the self-driving car. However, we have to use 
autonomous system in the aging society all over the world soon because the rate of elderly people is increasing year by year. Therefore, we have to consider how to introduce an autonomous system in the society in order to make people accept such a technology. For example, the research on explainable AI is important. If we can explain the detail of AI, something forget. Uh, something, uh, something forgetting, something learning. So we can explain such a thing. We can uh, count on AI. We will be able to use AI seamless in our daily life. Therefore, we both uh, we con uh, consider both of society in the loop and human in the loop simultaneously. The final goal of AI is to build artificial general intelligence (AGI) like human intelligence. From the viewpoint of robotics, last, so uh, robot as a service, this is very important. Robot technology is very useful to solve real world problems in, uh, in such a society, as in society, we need RA uh, last. So autonomous robots should be a partner or a friend while the robot learns the skill and knowledge from you is a human robot living together. The final goal is to build a cyborg beyond human. Now, we are in the phase of the next generation of cyber physical social co-evolution. So let's build a wonderful cyber physical social space together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Naoyuki, for the interesting talk. We received so many questions. Uh, in the first sessions, uh, 500 people joining the Zoom and also more than uh, 30 people joining YouTube. So until now, do you still have time, Prof, now to answer uh, some questions? Oh. Because time is almost over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So please select uh, some questions. Okay. I will read uh, some questions. First, uh, we receive questions from. Uh, I will read question from uh, Miss Fina Dian. Hello. Can we develop IOE in wearable Sorry. device, which has a lot of sensors in it? that we know that sensors must be touched in object area for maintenance, but that wearable cannot uh, be closer with that areas like smartwatch. So what do you think, Professor? Uh -huh. uh, actually, so this is an elemental problem, individual problem of sensors. Uh, of course, uh, some wearable device uh, has some noise, but so actually, yeah. so by using so redundant sensors, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I disconnected. Okay, <laughs> phone call. Okay, yeah, actually, uh, one sensor may be uh, may may not be reliable, but so we can use so several redundant sensors. So if one sensor is not reliable, but other sensor can cover uh, the reliable sensors. But so each sensor has advantage and disadvantage. So uh, in my previous uh, research, we proposed the concept of sensory network, not the sensor network, okay? Sensory network. In, in the research of sensory network, so each sensor uh, run, uh, runs the relationship with other sensors. The output of other sensor uh, is believable. At the time, uh, such a sensor believe this uh, measurement data or not, okay? So in this way, so some sensors are not reliable uh, in, in a specific uh, situation, but other sensors may can cover uh, such a uh, measurement error. So in this way, so we try to use uh, IoT device, uh, so huge size of uh, sensor uh, network devices simultaneously. Okay, thank you. thank you. Yeah, maybe one more question, if it's fine with you. Yeah. Okay, 
uh, what do you think about AI which has the ability to develop its own intelligence? Will there be any bad effects from there? Are there any protocols that limit the development of this intelligence, Professor? Uh, yeah. What is the main question? So protocol, protocol uh, negotiation or something? Or okay. So from Bintang said that AI uh, usually has the ability to develop its own intelligence. So whether uh, there is any bad effects from that, are there any protocols that uh, limit the development or the growth of the intelligence? I'm sorry, so I cannot catch up uh, with the uh, aim of the question, but uh, actually, so as I mentioned before, so individual, so AI technology uh, is matured. For example, so object recognition, uh, facial recognition, and also some uh, prediction or error detection, anomaly detection or something. But, but so uh, we have to use uh, such an individual uh, key technologies simultaneously. So this means, so we need a cognitive architecture to deal with the different types of output. So at that time, so I'm not sure the meaning of protocol, but uh, for example, so uh, in the lowest level, lower, uh, low, lower level, so uh, individual sensors and uh, sensors and uh, devices has the uh, different protocol. But uh, some features are extracted from the output of uh, individual uh, inference result or measurement result. So we can use uh, such an extracted uh, feature from the uh, measurement data. And then, so we can share, the, uh, share some, uh, some observed uh, information. As a result, so I think so uh, we can integrate uh some uh, features in the higher level okay so actually uh, yeah okay thank you <laughs> okay thank you prof now uh because the time uh, is over and actually we still receive so many questions but i know you are very busy and also time is uh over yeah Okay, uh, dear participants, I'm sorry, we can, I cannot read all of the questions from you. Uh, maybe we try to summarize and send it to Prof now. Maybe later I can summarize uh, all your questions and then send you by email. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please uh, give applause to Prof Royuki for this uh, interesting talk. Thank you very much. So I enjoyed the discussion with you. Uh, the participants are very active <laughs> here today's lectures. Okay, thank you, Prof. Now, uh, now, uh, Ani, uh, can you share a uh, token of appreciation for Prof. Now, Yuki? Hello, Ba Ani, are you there? Yeah. Thank you, Prof. Naoyuki. So here is the token of appreciation for you. Uh, thank you for being our uh, speakers today. Thank you very much. Terima <laughs> kasih. Yes, thank you. Okay, Baani, can you lead for the group photo before closing this session? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone, uh, before we close today's event, I would like to ask everyone to turn on their camera for the photo session. Everyone ready? First one. One. Yes. Two. Three, four, five, six,
finish? Uh, we still have some page left. Uh, I think it's fine, Ba Ani. Okay. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you so much for your participation. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our agenda. We would like to express our appreciation for the speakers for the informative and interesting presentation and all of your participation. This program will, won't be the same without you all. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, have a good day and goodbye. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Inga. Yeah, thank, thank you, you all participants. Thank you, Dr. Fazli. See you. Super uh, Samadis. Nia, terima kasih ya, sukses. Terima kasih Pak Indraji, terima kasih supportnya. Oke, okay. <laughs> gantian nih, kalau ada event events kita join. Insya Allah. Oke. Okay. Wow, oh, so many gambarnya pen. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Dean of uh, Multimedia University, the Dean of Electrical Engineering, Dr. Fazli also uh, joining this uh, guest lectures. Next week, we will have a guest lecture from Multimedia University about remote sensing with imaging radar. Please join us. Thank you. It's also Pak Fazli from Multimedia um, University. Yes. Dr. Fazli, are you still there? Oh, yes. I think, yeah, he's already, he is it. Okay, thank you. See you. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Yeah, barokah semuanya. Amin. Amin. Terima kasih, Bunia. Dah lift. Lift, yo, 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 lift, yo. Terima kasih, Bunia. Thank you, guys. See you.